stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Oh, no. That's how not these two fucking guys roll. We dedicate this podcast to the memory of Earl Simmons, a.k.a. DMX. Rest in power. I'm Rock. And I'm Margie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but... It's a podcast. Immature, crass, trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. So, Rock, we got some sad, sad news in hip hop. Yeah, man. This one, uh, when I heard the news, I I was really, like, upset by it. Yeah. It it sounds weird for, like, not knowing the guy, but, you know, what his music meant to you or how it made you feel. So you feel like you know the person. Uh Uh-huh. Rest in peace, DMX. 50 years old. 50 years. 50 years young. Yeah, I just, I guess he couldn't get out of the, I think, I think he was in like a, uh, a vegetative state almost after his, I think it was an OD, right? They say allegedly, right? Allegedly. And it caused him to have multiple heart attacks. So obviously what a terrible ending to, Ugh. again, but our athletes, musicians, we separate the art from the person. So I don't know. DMX as a person. All I knew was his music and what he meant to me, right? You know, I, I know there's a lot of people that um, he had some things in his past, some things, you know, again, and I just say allegedly because I don't know the story and I don't want to, you know, pass across incorrect information, but allegedly um, there were stories with him with, you know, animals, alleged abuse, mm. that kind of thing. You know, I saw a lot of people saying some shitty stuff on the internet, someone who just passed away. I, again, not my uh, not my style, but I separate the art and or artist from the person. Yes, I I, I agree, and I do that with uh yeah mostly all of uh, musicians that I admire. Uh, I always separate church and state. You gotta correct. Uh, let's just take it back real quick. How fucking good was he in Belly? He's awesome. <laughs> Dude, oh, man. Like, he, he was just a natural entertainer. Right? Like, could act, could rap, just very charismatic. Again, when when his first, well, the, the first album that we heard that dropped, we're like, whoa, this guy's different. Yeah. Right? It, it, was like the, it was like the equivalent of, like, heavy metal, but, like, rap. You know, very intense, very in-your-face, very matter-of-fact. Yeah. You know, he's like one of those rappers where, like, when you hear the lyrics and how he flows it together and the cadence that he spits it with, like, you do feel like you know the person, right? And he's telling a story. He's telling you what he's going through. And, and yeah, yeah. I think that actually connects with fans the best. Don't you feel like in the studio when he was recording, he was like, yo, just keep me heavy and hooky. Yeah. He's heavy? Like, as far as hip-hop, like... Right, yep. he'd be on the heavier side, the more aggressive side of hip hop. But he's hooky, like he's from his beats to his choruses. Like he's a fucking, he's a hook monster. Yeah, dude. And, uh, all his shit was catchy. Even like his underground shit was like catchy. Even songs he probably didn't intend to be catchy were catchy. Yeah, you know, and then straight up like alpha male rap. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but real quick, real quick, has there ever been a time that my boy Rocco has ever? Been to Hoboken, partied his tits off, and just danced on the dance floor to a song called Party Up in Here. Up oh, in here. Yeah, you know man. you shook your ass in Hoboken at some times at that jam. Y'all gonna make me go all out. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, like, stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Like all the songs, you know, and again, my favorite fighter of all time is Chuck Liddell, and he always came out to DMX. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah, DMX is the shit, bro. So you got acting. He did, he, he played, I think he played in a Cheng Li movie, Chun Li. The guy from Street Fighter? <laughs> Jet Li. There you go. And I don't even think it's him. Um, Belly is really what he's mostly recognized for. That's what you're recognized for these days, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so true. But um, rapping, yo, there was this dude on uh, Rock the Bells Radio. I, you know, he's a well-known G- DJ. I just didn't know fucking who he was. Um, 
He's like, yo, forget about studio DMX. I want to talk to you about live DMX at the club DMX. Yo, when I tell you the 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 fucking energy, the drive, the grind, he's like, yo, this this motherfucker would just fucking light a place up. And I'm just like, you want to know what? Yeah, like I've never seen him live, and I've seen I've seen YouTube clips, you know this and that, but like you could definitely tell like he would just fucking light up like a fucking small club, like Starland Ballroom would just blow it up. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Dude, the fucking power, like the graveliness to his voice, the growl, the fucking bark. I don't know, man. He uh, he was he was di- so like nobody sounded like him. No. And he nobody. sounded like nobody before him. And when he was on it, you know, when, when like you uh, featured him on a track, there was a night and day like you no matter who did it. It was like, yeah. All right. You know, how like you hear some tracks and it's like, all right, I know this guy just came in who featured, but he sounds just like who's guy who's rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you knew like when he came on, you, you heard a couple her. And like, you know, fucking <laughs> it, it was off to the races, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. It, and no nobody matched his intensity. I remember watching shit on YouTube, like live concert. I think he had like bad uh asthma. Did he really? And like I remember him like like having to like use an inhaler and but it didn't stop it. His live sh- like if you watch a whole concert of his, yeah. Every concert seemed like it was his last concert because he just like gave it all and it wasn't like half-assed and it wasn't like, you know, you see a lot a lot of, you know, rap gets a bad rap, pun intended, <laughs> you know, live because, you know, there's a, usually a live track behind you and you're not saying all the words and you have a hype man who's saying every other word that you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but with yeah. him, no, it was like he was doing the whole fucking thing. Yes. Super entertaining. It's sad the way his life ended. You know, they say yeah. he, had some, he had some demons. And unfortunately, you know, it looks like that's what ended his life. Well, we hear NTTFG, P-O-D. Our condolences to him and his family. Rest in peace to DMX. And uh, I'll keep listening. I love his music. So I've been rocking it nonstop since. Oh, oof. That came with some, like, peppers. Ah. <laughs> you know when they say don't hassle the Hoff? Oof. Well, you can't hassle the Hoff's daughter because she makes her Playboy debut. Ugh. And she is for the Playboy plus size. Uh, Haley Hasselhoff makes history with curvy Playboy cover. Your body does not define you. This was uh, on Yahoo. So is she like big? Is that what you're saying? A 28-year-old proudly posted an image of the German cover on Instagram. I am deeply humbled and honored to be the first ever curve model on a European cover of Playboy. So uh, she's big. Yeah, I thought I thought she was one of. She looks like uh, good for her. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Listen, I think. Uh, Listen, I think that's fucking. I think that's great. And now I think there's hope for you to fucking pose for jugs. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was holding my my two and a half year old the other day, and I was just going in her ear. I was holding her up by her hands, and she was just going. Nah, nah. And I was in her ear going. <laughs> I, don't even, I wasn't even saying the right words, but I, I was going. I know you're hoping to seize the day. Can only <laughs> follow me. <laughs> She's looking at me like, what the fuck? And I go, won't you follow me? Dad, <laughs> what the actual motherfuck you just said? <laughs> do you know who Hideki Matsuyama is? I do. And I'll tell you why. Please tell me. He won the Masters. Yes, he did. I was in a Masters pool. <laughs> Where are you? And I won. Did you really? First place. I didn't have Hideki. Okay. But the uh, the other four, five chaps that I had combined for the uh, the lowest score. And it was like 14 under. And I was declared the champion. Very nice. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's no skill involved. They picked the golfers for you. So, <laughs> Well, Hideki Matsuyama is the first, he's the first Japanese man to win a major. And uh, Japan's going pretty fucking Matsuyama over this. They're going. They're, they're, they're very happy. This is awesome. This is good for them. Well, he played awesome. Do you realize he was 10 under par? But, but. You would think the way he was playing that he would like nobody was near him. 
uh, there was a golfer, uh, Will Zalatoris, who was nine under. So he only lost by a stroke. But just the way that Matsuyama played Augusta, and Augusta's known for like just putting you in like bad positions. You know what I'm saying? Tough course. It's a tough course. And Matsuyama was 10 under par. I'm happy when I'm 20 over par. <laughs> <laughs> On the front nine. Uh, but imagine how good you – like he's so fucking skilled and so good. All right, so picture this. You know, like we've all been in that position where you're on the tee box, probably like your first hole usually. Yeah. You know, you got to wait for the first group to tee off. And, you know, once they get past the fairway, they're on the green, depending on if it's, you know, obviously like a par four, par five. And then you could tee off your group. And then there's like the group behind you waiting for you to your group to tee off. Yeah. And you feel the fucking immense pressure <laughs> by teeing off in front of eight swinging dicks. Could you imagine <laughs> what a pro golfer goes through <laughs> with a gallery like that? And cameras. Christ and cameras. Yeah. The old, what do they say? What do they say? Driving for show, puttons for dough. Yo, Rock. Yes, homeboy. Jerry Seinfeld made a surprise appearance at Gotham Comedy Club in New York City on the 2nd. I think it was uh, Friday night. Cuomo gave the 33% attendance uh, arts. Capacity. Ar- yeah, capacity, arts are open. And uh, Jerry Seinfeld contacted Gotham Comedy Club and said, can I go on first? And they were they just... They said, absolutely not, sir. <laughs> they said, why don't you take your shtick down the street? <laughs> yeah, we got fucking uh, <laughs> bubbles of fucking clowns going on. <laughs> so it's pretty good, man. Comedy, you know, it's coming back. 33%. Um, uh, <laughs> some of our past guests... Uh, Katie Boyle and and I know uh, Maddie Smith. They were tweeting and putting stories up over over the last couple of weeks. Like, yeah, they got shows. They're going from show to show. So it's good to see that the comedians are back. And that must have been pretty dope, bro. If you if you're if there's a thirty three percent capacity of a club that probably holds, I don't know what would the Gotham Comedy Club hold. I I wouldn't even know. But a thousand people, eight? No, no not no even fucking way. It's probably like a two hundred two hundred. Yeah, I'm going to say it's like 250 on a fucking, you know, including the waitresses. Okay. So, yeah, like 200 people. Now, 33%. I mean, I didn't know we were doing fucking, fucking music, sports, comedy, and math. <laughs> I mean. But I'm saying, like, you get to see Jerry Seinfeld with like 60 people. Pretty fucking awesome, right? That's, that's pretty good, bro. That's, yeah. that's that's like a that's like a historic type of oh remember when Seinfeld came back to Gotham the, when it reopened yeah I was there I was one of sixty people like that's pretty dope. Arch, I am super excited tonight. Oh, come on. Come we on. We have a guest all the way from across the pond in the yeah. UK. Nice. And to say that I am that I admire and I'm in awe of our guest tonight would be an understatement. He's a former pro boxer. He's a bare-knuckle boxing world champion and as of late is an adult star. Please <laughs> welcome to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast, Tyler El Tornado Good John. What's up, dude? That is up. Thank you very much. Uh, no, <laughs> dude, we're happy. We're, we're, we're so thankful that you give us some time today, man. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm cool. Um, yeah, just same old story at the minute in the UK. We're still sort of in a bit of a lockdown. So it's, um, yeah, it's a bit groundhog day at the minute. Yeah, it could get like that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, they're starting to open up a little bit around us. New York City, we're in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, comedy clubs opened up over the, the past weekend, so you could tell people are starting to get the fever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no one's been out by a year, so it's, it's going to be an interesting summer. That's just- <laughs> Absolutely. So what uh, what have you been doing to keep busy? I mean, I know that uh, your newest thing that you got, I mean, we'll skip to the present right now, I saw is uh, your OnlyFans. Um, you know, I heard the backstory, how you got into that, uh, I guess, with your ex-girlfriend. Um, but how's that going? I mean, it's um, it's not going the way uh, I'd want it to because of COVID, because, you know, we, we've been in lockdown and stuff like that. The 
Yeah, no, nobody, nobody's been traveling about. No, no, you know, no studios are open. I mean, to be honest with you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't class myself as a porn star just yet because I started doing it in the middle of uh, COVID. So you know, studios and things like that. What well, you know, they're not open. So um, yeah, I'd you know, I've obviously made my own scenes and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Will come when everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess you'll only know when the when the lights hit you. <laughs> yeah, I mean to be honest, this you know, it, yeah, I'm interested to see you know if I've got what it takes to do it. I might get there and I might freeze. Who knows? So. Yeah. I mean, Tyler, we don't know if he's coming or going. This guy, we don't know. <laughs> Just a straight up adrenaline junkie. I like to throw myself in uh, situations that throw me out of my comfort zone. To be fair, I mean, you know, it's a bit like with the bare knuckle. Um, I was only going to do it the once, just to say I've done it, and then bang, I'm I'm right in the mix now. I'm coming over to you guys in the USA to fight, and yeah, so I just put myself in in some good positions, in some risky positions. Yeah. So talk about that, the transition from um, boxing into bare knuckle. Now, I, I read stories about, um, I don't know if you were you were banned from boxing in the UK because of, of I know it was, I guess, weight cutting uh, measures that you took. Yeah. What's the, what's the whole story on that exactly? So, yeah, it was, uh, I was 20, yeah, I was 26. I just had, um, you know, my, my last professional boxing fight. I was more or less, I had made my mind up that I was perhaps going to retire anyway. I'd, cut, I'd sort of fallen out of love with the game a lot. Um, but I'd, I'd done a, fo- uh, a, I think it was called Fight Talk podcast. Mm. Um, and it was just like, it was just like old war stories, really, of, mm. of the fight game. Um, and I said like how I, how I used to make um, 140 pounds or 10 stone. Um, by using saunas, salt baths, and, and and other sort of things, and you know nothing illegal. But yeah, um, yeah a week a week later, I was um, I was sent a letter saying that I've been had had my license, uh, license taken away. So I rung the British board up, um, and yeah, they just said um, if you want to try and get your license back, you have to come in uh, in front of the board with a solicitor. And I just thought, do you know what? For the amount of, you know, I've been pro for what seven years, and you know, I, I was known for being in fire the night every time I was boxing. I think you know, when you get in there, you're putting your life on the line. Um, and you know, the boxing board were, were making money out of me as well, and just be like, We're taking your license off here, you're, you're banned, um, for something. So, you know, every, everyone knows about the weight cutting situations, everyone yeah. knows. Uh, um, you know, it's just um, no, nobody's allowed to talk about it. Everyone knows it happens, just nobody's allowed to talk about it. Um, That's crazy that, that they heard you on a podcast and and you know take your license away. Now, is that is that like is are the rules for cutting weight different than in the US in the in the UK that like you can't sauna, you can't you know. Like I say, it, you know, every everyone. I mean, when when I started made it public that my last gone and that everyone was like yeah but everyone does that everyone everyone uses saunas and salt baths that's you know that's just part and parcel of the fight game and um i was like yeah but um obviously nobody's allowed to talk about it and i think to be honest the the thing that really like nailed it um was like the week after i'd done this podcast or the week i'd done it and then the week it would sort of been released uh okay. like, Got Westgarth and fought for the English title, um, and, and had died. And I think it was just a case yeah. of the board, example of someone. Uh, it was too young. I mean, basically, <laughs> really, you know, it's fucking weird. I mean, so yeah. that, so your boxing license is taken away. At what point do you want to get into bare knuckle? And what, like you said, you you wanted to maybe do one fight and see how it was, but. I mean, that's, that's a pretty, it's a pretty brutal endeavor to do if you plan on doing it. Yeah. Once. Do you know what? It's, I mean, I, I think I can speak for every single, you know, 
ex-pro and pro, you know, I, I've tried to retire from boxing about six times and it, and it just, back in, it's, it's a life. Do you know what I mean? It's not... It's not just a job and that, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years and, you know, I'm 30 in May. It's um, been, it's just your life. So when I tried to, you know, when I got my license taken away from me, I tried to live a normal life. I tried to go and set up my own gym and train people. Mm. Um, it was great and I enjoyed it, but it didn't fill that void of, I need to get in there and I need to have a fight with someone and I need to feel alive. I need thousands of people watching me do you know what I mean that's yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I it, you know it was literally by chance I was watching TV on what's not BBC News in this country and they were talking I had a little slot about talking about bare knuckle boxing saying how you know it was the biggest uh, royal rising sport in, in Britain at the time and that had the promoter on there I just Facebooked him, I think, or, or, or Googled him, got his number, give him a ring, and yeah, I think I was fighting two months later. So, <laughs> pretty quick thing, which, to be honest with you, is the best way. If you're going to do a bare knuckle fight, you just need to get in there and do it because the more time you've got to think about it, the more time you'll uh, talk yourself out of it. See, Rock, you have t- you have some some time. You could do it. That's it, right? <laughs> you, Hell no. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Was the training different that you went through, like a training camp for boxing that that you did for bare knuckle? Because I know I, I hear some guys that you know I don't know what your philosophy is. I know we we've had uh, uh, Chris Lieben on here, and he just retired. You know his last fight wasn't bare knuckle, and he and I heard some guys say you know they may not throw everything with all power, and they may not you know they're they're looking to protect their hands and. He's like, yeah. He goes, I don't do that. I just fought like I fought in MMA, and I'm like, oh, okay. But I heard a lot of guys have different uh, different ways they go about it. Yeah, I think um, yeah, th- there's certain shots that um, you have to throw differently, without a doubt. That's you know that's standard because you you break your hands, like you know, like and things like that. You know, whereas a jab. You'd throw a jab with gloves on. I, I used to throw a jab. I wouldn't even sort of tense my hand. I'd almost flick it out. Obviously, you can't do that in bare knuckle. You'll break fingers and everything oh, else. So, okay. Um, and not only that, you just got to land on on your knuckles on the first two knuckles. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're going to be breaking hands, and oh. that's all very well with Chris Lee been saying he just throws it like in MMA. But a lot of them MMA guys break hands in the bare yeah. knuckle. <laughs> oh. I, the, the boxing guys don't damage their hands as much because they are more accurate um you know with their shots so depends what you want to do if you want to break your hands go <laughs> in there and well but yeah so you you would say more of uh, maybe like a tactic that you would use you would a, a strategy of uh, precision and accuracy and like i know i'm gonna hit this motherfucker two times right there bop 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 and more than just coming out, just throwing bolos, just throwing fucking hay. You're not going to come out throwing haymakers and, and accomplish anything. I'll be honest, like you know, the guys that do that, you know, I, I would, I would fight them seven days a week. Okay, uh, okay. But you know, them guys who just want to come balling out, big shots. I mean, there was a guy called uh, Mark Navarro. I fought Mark Navarro. Sorry, um, I fought in my second, yeah, second bare knuckle fight. Um, I mean, I made a made a absolute highlight reel out of that guy. <laughs> so, like you know, tough as heck, but um, too tough for his own good. Just came balling in with shots, and he made me look like Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Mayweather. Uh, do you know what I mean? Really, <laughs> a super. Wow. Star. So thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so conversely, how is how is uh, defense? differently you know obviously without the bigger gloves you know you're you're swearing your shoulder up is that is there a lot of thought put into that i yeah so for me the key is head movement you know because you've not got them them gloves to to block shots and that um head movement's key uh and yeah like you'll see in, my, in a lot of my fights so sometimes i need a, uh, to take a couple of shots to wake up a bit i like being punched and woken up a little bit um <laughs> see a lot of, of me goading people on which is always practical but um in the in the majority of it i've got very good head movement um 
and obviously counter very well off my head movement as well. I saw that um, I watched the the, the documentary um, on Broken, and you know the the championship fight you had with uh, Sean George's team was uh, the head movement was your head movement was was crazy. You know, it, it's it's your your head never stayed on the center line for more than like two seconds, and um, watching that documentary really opened my eyes because you know again. Boxing, MMA, they're all combat sports, but this, the, the damage that you take, you know, and, and that almost that end scene when you're in the hospital, you won, you won the championship, but the way that your face looked, it's like, and, and the way that it looked like you felt, like how the fuck did you ever say, I want to do that again voluntarily? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I, I can't, all I can put it down to is that I'm just not right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, Archie's a real man. We're not. Exactly. That's what. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, you know, even honestly, that like I remember in that documentary, I mean, it caught moments of it, but I was in a bad way, man. It was like I, I went really into shock and freezing cold. I've got two du- duvets wrapped around me. I'm freezing like that. Uh, and and eventually I had to go hospital and stuff like that. Yeah. It, that, I mean, not just me. I'm talking for every bare knuckle fire. Right. I'm not off weird. We're, we're some weird bods, man. We're some weird, weird geezers. I, I, uh, and, and women as well, obviously. you got the you got the females over him. Yeah. Well, so he's just mad people. I'm, I'm watching you throw throw punches and I'm wondering where it's coming from. And what I say where, meaning it doesn't look like you're in the game just to fucking, you know, I'm here to fight. I'm, I don't know. The crowd is great and show bone or whatever. Some of your punches look like they're coming from somewhere inside deep, bro. Like, 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 I don't yeah. know. What, I don't know what you're thinking about when you're, when you're tussling up with somebody, but can you give me a little insight on where these, these, bombs are being thrown from do you know what it's just do you know what I love about bare knuckle boxing it, it, it's it's think or swim you know what I mean it's like I, I, I can you know I can still remember my first bare knuckle fight and coming from boxing it was like obviously we're doing 10 and 12 three minute rounds so the fights are a lot slower paced and you sort of had a lot more time to pick your shots and you know, nothing, nothing gets you or nothing prepares you for a bare knuckle fight. Do you know what I mean? But a bare knuckle fight, and obviously, you know, inspiring. You're sparring with head guards, gloves. So going into the fight, I went in there, sort of picked a couple of jabs and things like that. And and Tony Laffey, my opponent, it was it was actually quite scary. The guy just threw the kitchen sink at me, was beating his chest at me. Wow. Punching him and he was just like, you know, whacking himself, calling me on. And I was just like, wow, this is this is a different level. This is, you know, this is more than box. Um, and then I went back to the corner. My trainer just went, wake the fuck up, or this guy's gonna whack you out. Um, and yeah, I got down to my box in and, and I won. But it was, yeah, it was baptism of fire. That that bare knuckle was different. Oh yeah. So the mindset going into the fight, and there was a something that you said that uh, it struck me in the documentary. You were talking about, I guess you were at the time. Uh, it's a scene when, when I guess your your then girlfriend at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are a little bit of argument before, like there's a day before the fight or something like that, and you were just saying, you know, you were narrating, saying, you know, carefully not to use your emotions up during the build up to a fight. So talk about that. Like it's not just you're, you're not just training your body. Like you're training your emotion of, of where you should be during that camp and, and, and your mindset going into the fight. That, that, I think it's a lot of uh, something that somebody who has never stepped in a cage or a ring would never even know to think about. Yeah, it's again. You know, I, I'll talk for every fighter when when we say, look, you know, when it's fight week, it it's time to switch on. Do you know what I mean? It's you know, obviously, you switched on over camp and everything else, but it's time to really knuckle down. Uh, you're making weight. Uh, yeah, it's just it's coping with all, all the mental stuff that's going on. Uh, it's making sure that you're getting rest. You, you know, you're all rested up. You can't. You've got to sleep and that. So, it's a difficult time, fight week. It really is. I mean, you know, 
I've done it where I've had to lose a lot of weight. The fight on the documentary, I had to lose about five pounds, which, you know, which was all right. Um, but yeah, fight week can be, can be, te- it can be testing. I mean, my, my ex-partner, I put it down to nerves and everything else, the way she was being, but you know, you've got to, yeah, you got to, you got to do <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you gotta be—you have to be selfish at that point. You have to be like, listen, I'm, I'm going to fight. I gotta do what I, I can't have any other distractions. Like, I have to, it has to be about me this week. It does. It's like, yeah, it's. I mean, it is. I'm sure it's 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 a a testing time for any uh, you know, any anyone who's with a fighter. Um, but you've got to learn pretty quick how, how to deal with that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but. I showed on that documentary some 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 restraint. I say, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, seeing you, uh, I believe it was you lying in bed, you know, in the hospital, and like looking at like you know your close your family members. It's it's you know you got to see somebody that you love and care about that you know my you know my my husband my son wants to get punched in the face, <laughs> but yeah. you, you come at it with again. I, I see you coming at it with, with this fire. And then, you know, you. And one of your quotes was, I believe it was like, I would die in that ring, you know, or to get that belt, you know. And I, I, you're a better man than me. No shit. <laughs> uh, I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm um I'm a dying breed. Like even now, um, you know, bare knuckle FC. Um, you know, they they offered me a fight at the, one of their champions in in six weeks' time, and I'm like, boom, I'm there. Um, you know, I'm there. I'm there. I'm waiting, waiting for a phone call now. Is it happening or is it not? They offered me. Give, I'm I'm a dying breed. I'll I'll fight anyone. Um, yeah, this bare knuckle is my game. What what's unrealistic? Meaning, like, I need you to fight in two weeks. It, would there have to be some stipulations where there had to be like, nah, fuck that, I ain't doing it, or is there um, something? At this at this level, you know, what at world title level, you know, you you should be given eight weeks for a fight, you know. But mm. um, you know, we've, we've made, you know, like I say, I got I got this fight it's in like six weeks. Um, it's not it's it's pretty terrible money as well. But I'm like, look, do you know what? It's not about the money. Let's go. Let's. I just want to be world champion. It's all about legacy for me. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that's something that's really lacking um, from other fighters these days. You know, so that's what I mean. I'm, I'm, a, dying, I'm a dying breed. I take the fights, the, them big fights, for the legacy, not for money. You have a fight in place now? Well, this is, I, I, like I say, I've been, I've been asked to do it, uh, to fight uh, for the world title mm. on May 1st. I ha- but they've got to get me this uh, like a work visa and stuff like that sorted. So, like I say, I'm training every day. I'm waiting for that phone call to say that I'm not fighting. So <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it. But I'm still training. Like you see, like you see, I'm in shape. Yeah, yeah I've been training really hard. So if, fingers crossed. I'm like I say, I'm a dying breed. I'm just call me out. I'm I'm come out. I went out there in Mel- in, in the last fight. In the middle of uh, a pandemic, do you know what I mean? No trainer, no no friends, no family, no nothing. Mm. And I went out there and and fought on my own and won against Charles Bennett, who's had what seventy five pro MMA fights. Do you know what I mean? I, I I'm a proven gladiator. I really am. And Charles Bennett's an all around scary dude outside of the cage too. <laughs> um, did you? Uh, now was that the first time you were in the US for that fight? Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, I had to quarantine for 14 days in Dubai to then be able to go to the US. So um, you had to be in like a low risk level country for 14 days before you could go to a high risk one. So <laughs> yeah, I was training myself um, at the time. I had, I had my um, well, it was the first time we'd actually properly met. But Mark Godbeer, another fighter who was on the same card. Mm-hmm. Um, England. So we both traveled out to Dubai, just trained with each other. And then we back to America. Uh, I went to Vegas. He went to Atlanta. I was just training myself in Vegas. And then he, uh, and then he, he flew, flew over to Vegas and joined me and we just trained each other. And then two weeks before the fight, bang, we both got COVID. Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> he got double pneumonia on his lungs, so he ended up in hospital and uh, wow. couldn't fight. I, I, I was, you know, I was ill. I was, I had like flu-like symptoms. You know where you just, you just kind of you ache and you're just tired and stuff like that. I didn't train for about eight days, um, and then five days before the fight, I went and got myself another test, got a negative test, flew to Mississippi, and and went and had my fight. So, luckily, I I, I was I could get the negative test to to go. Wow. So basically, you're going to a foreign country that you've never been to. You're going to fight a, a decorated MMA fighter who arch. Charles, well, he was crazy, but now he's Charles Felon Bennett. <laughs> no disrespect, a crazy motherfucker outside of the cage, right? So you're going to fight this guy who's a killer trying to knock your head off. And you have none of your friends and none of your training partners. And then you get COVID and then have to fight. Holy shit. Yeah. And. And to his mate, it's even madder, right? Uh, two months, no, not even two months, about a month and a half before I went to America, I had my jaw broken on both sides. I had six teeth um, taken out. Um, and then, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Months later, I'm, I was back in a bare knuckle fight as well. Oh my God. That's insane. Um, and, 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 you want, and you want to know what? I put together a fucking swing set in the backyard and I was like, yeah, I'm a fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I stubbed my toe. I'm calling out of work. This guy is, uh, oh my God. And that, and that was a good. That was a good fight, too. And it had to be a, definitely a different experience, you know, fight in the States for the first time. Um, you know, obviously, you're you're good for that sport, right? You're, um, I heard there was a little bit of beef about pay afterwards, but uh, even, even I guess David Feldman had said that, you know, you're, he wants you to fight for them. Like, like you're good, you know, regardless of what the earth screen was, you're good for the sport. You know, you have the look, you have the personality, you have the skills first and foremost, but, um, is that relationship kind of mended now? I don't know, really. (laughs) To be fair, Do you know what? Like, it'll be one of them where I know my I know my worth. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm more than than just a fighter. You know, I, I am I am very marketable. I'm you know I'm charismatic. You know, I I do I do things for this game. Do you know what I mean? This bare knuckle. I did over in the UK. I was the face of it. I've come over here, and you know I've had one fight, and and to be honest with you, it was a very mediocre performance, but. Let's face it, I'd done well to even get in the ring and fight, let alone win. So, you know, you I, I want I'm you know, I'm chomping at the bit to come over and show everyone what I'm like when I've got my trainer by my side. I'm I'm hundred percent fit. I've had a full camp. I haven't had to travel to Dubai, travel to America, do this, do that. I haven't had COVID, you know, so um yeah, I think BKFC need to sharpen the fuck up because, you know, if they don't want me, there's gonna be another promotion out there that want me because I'm I'm a you know I'm an all or nothing fight I'm a, I'm always in the great fights and and I talk a lot of shit so <laughs> get great promotion off me do you know what I mean well Arch put it this way right so you know that the uh, BK fighting champion wants him badly because I'm pretty much you called <laughs> you called the, the the president of it a cunt <laughs> right on Twitter <laughs> And they want him to fight. So, like, figure out how good he is for that sport. Do you know what? I just, like, like you know, I've been, like I said, I've been boxing 20 years now. When I was a pro club boxer, I was signed to Eddie Hearn, who's now, like, you know, biggest promoter in the world boxing-wise. Um, I'm not too long in the tooth for these fucking promoters. Do you know what I mean? I just, like, you know... I have got other things I, I I can do in that as well. Do you know what I mean? I just I don't want to be disrespected by promoters anymore. So it's you know people need to shape the fuck up if they want these good fights and that to happen. It's just a bit of respect and be honest, me I don't think David shows respect and, and that's yeah that's the issue at the minute. Got it. Mm-hmm. I, hope, I hope that all works out. And if they're smart, if they're smart, it will. Um, so were you, you know, I follow you on Instagram. You, after that fight, you were hanging in, you were in Vegas for a while after that. No. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um again like I was told that I was gonna be fighting in February, so I I hung about to obviously um get back training. I was training and then it moved to March and then and then I was taken off the March card. So I stayed out there for another seven weeks just um on the piss and, and banging birds, really. It was good. <laughs> yeah, it looked like uh from from where you're posted, it looked like you, you were having a a, a great time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't fighting, so obviously, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't proper Vegas. It was like twenty five percent capacity, so I didn't get to see proper Vegas, which was was a shame. But um, you know, I got to see a fair amount of it, and um, yeah, just that made it turned it into a bit of a holiday. Last two weeks, though, I did uh, get salmonella, and I ended up in the hospital, which was Christ. which, yeah. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! U.S. first <laughs> place, man. I don't and, know. Wait, and and me being me, right? So get this, right? It's, I mean, to be honest with you, I was I was fucking ill, and uh, obviously I'm on my own, so I'm I'm laid in bed and I'm thinking to myself, I was I was being sick and and diarrhea so much, and I didn't eat for three days. I'm thinking to myself, fucking, hell, I'm gonna die because I've literally got no one here. Like everyone's back in England, and that. Anyway, I've mustered up the fucking energy from somewhere to get in a fucking Uber and go to hospital. Anyway, I've gone to hospital. I've got kidney damage. I've got colitis. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm being sick blood. I'm being diarrhea blood. I was, I was honestly, I was in a bad way. Wow. Um, anyway, they, they're going to keep me in for the night. <laughs> I'm in there. And I just didn't like this nurse, man. This nurse was really, really disrespectful. Just, just like because obviously I was ru- I was rushing in, rushing to the toilet to either be sick or whatever. Like literally every five minutes, yeah. and it unplugged my uh, my machine for my drip. Right, so she she was like having a go at me for it. So I've literally just gone. Do you know what? Like this, um, I, I said, look. If you if you can't be nice to people, don't be a nurse like that. And I ripped my IV out of my arm and I walked out of hospital like that. Um, but obviously, I didn't know I had salmonella, so I'm fucking ill. I'm really ill still, right? But yeah. I want to. I'm dying to see this chick over in Miami. Right? I'm in Vegas at the minute. I'm dying to see this Brazilian Playboy chick one more time before I leave, right? So I've flown to Miami. I'm ill as fuck. I've gone and seen her. Anyway, we're having a couple of drinks. I'm fucking so ill. So she's had to look after me all night. Right. The next day, I'm flying back to the UK. I've got back to the UK. My mates have picked me up from the airport and they're just gone, do you know what, mate? You you look yellow. Like, my skin had just gone yellow like that. So I had to go back to hospital. Um, had all blood tests and all that and everything else. And obviously, had Sam there. I had kidney damage and all Jesus. that. <laughs> Fucking ill, like hallucinating and and all that madness. It was, yeah. But she was hot though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, if I sent you a picture, right, you would have done exactly the same. <laughs> now, yeah, he didn't care puking, shitting. He was getting there. <laughs> hey, <Mate>, was I? <laughs> Um, so that transitions, you know, we kind of started off with it, but I, uh, so your only fans, right. This is something that, and I think it's a good move. It's like, you know, obviously combat sports has a, has a shelf life, right. Yes. Um, and this is something that you kind of say you do for fun. Like you're not doing it for the money right now. And I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a, a good gig, right? So I like, you know, like my, the, you know, the girl with less than savage who was in, um, who was in my documentary, you know, she's a well-known porn star here in the UK. You know, she's, she's, you know, she is. Um, and, you know, all the girl, all the well-known uh, porn actresses, whatever, um, make, have an OnlyFans and they make, they make the majority of their pay, their money on OnlyFans. You know what I mean? That's how they do it. Um, obviously I was with her for about a year and, and we were sort of going to, do one together and we'd been doing bits together and that I started my own she was helping me and all this we'd split up and then I just kept getting messages from other girls and that wanting to work with me and stuff like that and I just thought look why not why, why wouldn't I um, and yeah no, like I say it's great and I haven't experienced what it's going to be like outside of COVID really either because it's, it's always been in lockdown and 
you know, like I say, the proper the proper studio stuff and all that hasn't even you know hasn't even been opened. So let's see what happens. So is it were, were the nerves the same for your first fight as your first uh, your first scene? Do you know what? Like, because like I say, um, you know, where it's been sort of like my my, my first what you'd call with sit scene, I done with two girls, um, and they made me feel very relaxed. Um, <laughs> I feel, um, but yeah, no, they were, they were cool. They were, they were sick. And yeah, look, you know, it's, it, it does very much depend on who, who you've got. I like to vibe with girls, right. And, and stuff like that. I like to get on with the girls as well. Um, and yeah, I, I made some really good friends in the industry. <laughs> what's your, what's your goal with that? Obviously, when COVID opens up, and what what what's my sort of plan? Do you mean? Yeah. Um, I just I I've, I've actually been offered um a, a a couple of scenes over in America, um, but again, it's all down to obviously work visa and things like that. So if this whole v- uh, work visa situation was sorted out with Ben Knuckle FC, I could go over there and I could I could do all the all that kind of stuff as well, which which would be great, but um. But yeah, that's that's the the direction I want to head towards. Obviously, I'm going to do the only fan stuff as well. Um, but yeah, this I want, I want, I'm I'm like this with everything. Look, if I'm going to be if I'm going to do this, I want to be the best. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not fucking about. I'll put myself in a position where, like I say, sink or swim. I'm either going to do it or I'm going to fuck it up. <laughs> and risks every day. Uh, fuck it, fuck it up, or fuck it. You're gonna fuck something. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, I put my name out there. I, I, you know, like I say, I didn't give myself the the whole name as a porn star. That's what social media and other people have sort of announced myself as. But, um, but why not? If that's what the what I've got now, I've got to back this shit up. So, let's do it. Well, I, I'll tell you what, it, it can only, you know, I know you, you fight first, but I I, it, it, um, I only see it helping <laughs> as far as like a bare knuckle type situation. You know, you do some scenes in America, bro. You're going to see a yeah. little bit bigger of a fan base coming to in the U.S. coming to the next yeah. fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was something that I was trying to explain um when I was in America to Bare Knuckle FD, they were the ones that were like, oh, you need to stop all this OnlyFans stuff and all the porn stuff. And, I, and at the time I was, you know, I was talking to, and, and I was doing scenes with girls who were big in the UK and stuff. I've got a lot of followers on Instagram, Twitter, everything else. And I was just trying to explain to them, look, this is a, this is just a different avenue and a, or, and a different audience that's coming to watch this this fighting now. That's all it is. Do you know what I mean? It's just a different audience. And the the bare knuckle boxing over back in the UK when I was doing it was shown on Television X, which is like the biggest porn star, uh, biggest oh. porn station, you know, oh. TV. So uh, you know, it goes it, hand it, in hand. Yeah, yeah, it does really. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell them to fucking lighten up. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Listen, you you want me to bash this? Yeah, you want you want to go? You want to see me go in there and potentially beat someone to death, or me get beat to But you don't want to see me fuck someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me ask you this: it's got to be two things, right? So I'm sure, like what you're doing right now, you're, you're pretty much the envy of every uh, every dude out there, right? Rocky. <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're, you're a killer with your hands, right? You're getting into the adult stuff. You, you know, good looking dude, tattooed, right? But I'm sure, I'm sure there are some assholes out there that, you know, legit, you know, first off, probably on their couches, not athletic and want to talk shit about, you know, you, you fighting. Meanwhile, they wouldn't probably ever even have a sparring session with pads on. Meanwhile, you're going with just your knuckles. Um, that probably bring hate to you. I'm sure you have to find that. Oh, it's, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's not a normal day if I don't wake up to some kind of abuse from on some social media outlet. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, just what it is, though, isn't it? It just, um, it just means you're doing well. Um, I mean, it used, to, it used to get to me, but like I say, it just, you know, it just means you're doing well and, and you're the envy of someone. But yeah, it's uh, you. It's just something you have to. You either have to learn to deal with, 
You just yeah. have to let it with. I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say, I'm sure 99% of those people want your life <laughs> and want to be you. Right, and, and it's been quite funny. I, you know, I don't lose my head with people, but if you look at my, my Instagram, I always put like something like, uh, you know, majority of these people are following me and I'll say, look, you, you, you're following me. You're a fanboy. You're a fan. Do you know what I mean? They're like, and it, it just cuts people dead. Like, look, you know, if you don't want to watch me do my stuff or whatever, or I have people say, oh, you're boring. Then I'll click on their profile and they're following me. And I'm like, don't, <laughs> you're the one following me. I'm not following you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I'm not, no one's forcing you to watch me. Um, yeah. People, be honest, people baffle me. They really do. With some of the stuff, like I get full on paragraphs from people telling me or explaining to me why they hate me. And I think to myself, this person has never met me in his life. You know what I mean? He's only seen, you know, pictures on Instagram or, or YouTube or whatever. Yeah. And the guy got, he's got, there's some real passion behind that. Not liking me. Um, yeah. People, people baffle me. That's just insane. But it, it's, it's um, almost like, well, uh, listen, I'm going to write you back, but I really have to go fuck this real hot girl. <laughs> and I have to go train and like do some cardio. And I'm, I'm actually looking really good, but I will write you back in a little bit. Take care. <laughs> well, I, I said to someone the other day, I actually put the post up and even he, he like messaged me, probably messaged me, laughed at it. He put like, oh, you're, what did he put? You're ugly, something like you've got missing teeth stuff like that and i just went mate do you know how many porn stars model dancers strippers are banged like that and i said mate i've gone through more of them when you've gone through tissue stunt like that yeah he had nothing to say ah. yeah and the funniest one i was going through the other day somebody somebody <laughs> on instagram wrote to you you're 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 a decent who well, you didn't speak right you're a decent boxing but fuck you're an annoying little cunt Fuck your face, you bitch. <laughs> you took a picture. <laughs> you have a picture of him. <laughs> and uh, this is a not the greatest looking guy. <laughs> and you wrote, don't think I don't think a lot more needs to be said, do you? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> I was pissing my fucking pants. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic! People's uh, people's mouths just start running, and they don't understand. Yeah. Well, listen, dude, we are looking forward to seeing you fight again. Um, you know, you said in May. Well, yeah. I mean, like I say, it's yeah. It, I've I've been offered this fight. I've I've accepted the fight. Um, I know that Luis Palomino has been vocal on on social media saying that no one will fight him. Um, I stood at that right and, and made a video myself and and, uh, and now he's accepted it. So all Bear Knuckle FC has to do is put it all together and it, they can have the fight. But we'll see what happens. Well, we, we wish you the best of luck, brother. Thank you so much for giving us some time. Can you tell the people out there where they could find you, where they could blow your shit up? <laughs> uh, um, well, you can find me mostly on Instagram at L Tornado Tyler. Um, if you are feeling daring and want to see a bit more of me, uh, you can go on Twitter, uh, which is at Tornado Tyler. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're what I'm mostly on. And, uh, uh, and, and your OnlyFans, just to see another side of you. Uh, the OnlyFans, yeah, you can get on my OnlyFans through, through my Twitter. Um, we'll see. You'll see that. <laughs> Dude, listen, we appreciate so much you take some time out and and, and chat with us. Um, if you come any if you're back in the US and you're anywhere near the, the East Coast, I'd like to, to catch up with you, grab a drink. But um can't wait to see you fight in May and just really appreciate it, dude. Stay well. No worries, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Be good, brother. Stay safe. El Tornado. Thanks, dude. No worries, my guys. See you see you soon, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely I'm over over the east, east Coast. Hopefully, I never got to see much of the East Coast. So, um, yeah, that'd be that'd be sick. So, hopefully, one day I'll come over there. And I got um, invited to like a band. Look, is it Belfast, New York? Where's Belfast, New York? To you? Belfast, Where, you Belfast has to be up. That may be upstate, but yeah, upstate, upstate yeah, New York. Distance. Yeah, yeah. So, well, but yeah, I, I'd like to come over there. I want to see the East Coast and that. Definitely. Oh, and yeah. you, I'm, I'm sure they would enjoy you too, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Right. Stay well. Thank you.
That was Tyler Goodjohn. Motherfucker. Yo, he fights. Tornado. He fights. He fucks. If he was a foodie rock, he would be your perfect trifecta. Oh my God. Triple F. Holy shit. Tatted up. Good looking guy. Fucking mashes people's face in. Mashes other things in and and and, and, the and girls hear his british accent and think it's a rat yeah, you you want to know what i don't know i, I think uh, i think he'd be a little jealous of he, i think he'd rather put a swing set together that's what i yeah, think yeah definitely he wants he wants i think he wants your life dude i, mean, I think he wants my life <laughs> so with that being said rocco do you have anything left for the people if you just heard us shooting the shit with El Tornado, don't be afraid oh. Just stop the hate eat a potato, and erupt like a volcano. Because you just listened to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. We out. <laughs>